Sheila Andreen from IndieFlix. First off, tell us what IndieFlix is. Well, Variety calls us the Netflix of independent film. But how we're different is how we uh, compensate the filmmakers, the royalty pool model that we've created. Uh, we pay filmmakers for every minute watched. And right. just, just to give you some context, mm -hmm. uh, Netflix will license movies to stream on their platform, or they will pay minimum guarantees, and IndieFlix actually pays filmmakers for every minute watched. Oh, so um, that is different. It's very different. We also have uh, shorts, features, documentaries, web series, and now we've opened it up for independently produced television. So we stream globally, and we're on Xbox, Roku, Sony. In fact, my developer just uh, emailed me as I was walking up here and said that we just went live on iTunes. Oh my so god! So our official iTunes app is live, and uh, Friday we launched on Fire TV. No kidding. Yeah. But I gotta ask you this, I thought that filmmakers made wild amounts of money. I know, everybody thought that. I think that's why so many people think they want to get into film, is that they'll be able to tell stories and, and uh, you know, get their name out there and make some money, but they don't. Filmmakers are actually the only, um, they're, they are the very bottom of the food chain. So while they create the most power, they, you know, great stories, which I believe film is the most powerful medium on the planet, filmmakers are actually not compensated. We are programmed for decades. We've been conditioned to be grateful for exposure. And so when I started making movies, I thought, when I realized, you know, I had made a feature film, I had traveled around the world, and I got three distribution offers, and I realized that these distribution offers were not very good, and I thought, I did some research with my friends at Searchlight and Focus and they said, no, this is how it works. You get exposure in your first couple of films and then you start to make money. And I thought, well, if I, this is how it works, then I'm never, I either need to get out of the business or find a way to monetize my films. So I got to pay back my investors. Absolutely. Um, are there opportunities today for women in film that didn't exist before? Yeah. I can say with a confident, with full confidence, yes. I think that the independent film space is the place where women can really make their mark. And I kind of look at it like, I used, you know, I did costume design for television and film. I did The Wonder Years and Party of Five and Dawson's Creek, and then I would do feature films as well. And so I really immersed myself in the world of fashion. And one, th one thing that I truly believed, which is always this ongoing conversation, is, is it, does the street influence the runway? Or is it the runway that influences what people wear and that you buy in the stores? I firmly believe it's the street to the runway. I think that in the film world, it's the independent space that will dictate what Hollywood will make. Mm -hmm. so right now, what are the barriers to entry? Is it money? Um, I think money used to be the biggest barrier to entry. But I think now with crowdfunding and brands and institutions starting to you know, open up a little bit and offer grant funding or promotion funding, product placement funding, more and more filmmakers can get films made. And I think technology has allowed filmmakers to make a movie for a lot less money. I mean, gosh, I remember the days where you know, a million dollar movie was, it's like, oh, well, you can't make a good movie for a million dollars. A low budget movie was three to five million dollars. Well, now a low-budget movie can be made for four or five thousand dollars. Oh, no kidding! Oh, yeah, we have a film that was made for four thousand dollars, and I think their next milestone will be two hundred and fifty thousand dollars net to them oh my in gosh. just a year and a half. So, how do you do that, though? Because we were we started off the interview by talking about how it's really hard to make money, but then you're talking about you know a hundred to one hard investment. To it's hard to make millions of dollars online. It hasn't been proven yet. The nano percent can do it, you know, like some breakout hit. But I think we need to look at the online space as a longer runway. It, the cost to, you know, the, the barrier for entry is minimal. You can make a movie for less, you can market it for less, you can build an audience while you're making your movie then you can start releasing it. And there should be some sort of a strategy of how you release it online, whether you do you know, iTunes and then an on-demand play. I think Netflix has now become the last stop for an independent filmmaker because they pay a one-time licensing fee that is paid out over eight quarters. And don't get me wrong, I love Netflix. But if you made a $300,000 feature film, 
you go to Netflix, they're going to give you maybe a $25,000 licensing fee. Or even if they gave you a $100,000 licensing fee, you're going to be up there for two years and potentially 50 million people could watch you. You will never make more than that 100000 And it will be paid out to you in eight quarters with no interest. And it kind of cannibalizes other platforms. Hmm. So it's, it sounds then like that if you're going to be a filmmaker, you really need some business sense first. I think, every, I think everyone should learn a little bit of business and a lot of marketing. Because marketing, you know, communication. We all, I wish, in fact, I was talking to some friends about high schools should teach students. You should be able, you have to graduate knowing how to write a proper email, how to communicate an idea, even maybe put together PowerPoint presentations about how, you know, whatever it is that you want to create and launch. Mm. Sheila, as, as we finish up for today, because we could talk for hours, uh -huh. think, um, <laughs> what do you see happening with independent film, with indie flicks over the next five years? Well, because IndieFlix is a global, you know, we're an international company, and we stream films from 85 countries and 3,000 film festivals, and we, we stream all over the world. It's a subscription-based business, so it's $5 a month. And since we pay filmmakers for every minute watched, I feel like, truth, tr honestly, my secret sort of vision is that filmmakers will be making meaningful revenue, and I don't mean just a little bit of money to pay back their investors, but they can buy houses, they can, I think that IndieFlix could potentially affect economies in small countries. Eastern Europe is a perfect example. Hollywood and the government fill the pipelines of what people watch. Now we come in and we give the filmmakers an opportunity to put their content up. We're going to be localizing in some key countries. We're subtitling the entire library into multiple languages. We will be able to tell stories that couldn't get out there before. We'll be able to affect change. Movies will be able to start conversations that can change the world. And we'll be paying filmmakers for every minute watch. So I, I have, you know, it sounds idealistic, but the world's changed. You know, we can reach for those stars. We can do those things. And the nice thing about the internet, it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man. Fantastic. Sheila Andrine, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.